Hello guys and welcome back to Only Trams episode number 10. Now we've got a lot to do in this episode, but the first thing I want to do is rectify an issue that I've seen and you're about to see exactly what I'm talking about. Just before we get into the main cargo depot here, just watch this. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't notice that before, but that needs to be changed. I was, I was watching a tram go past even in three times speed and it almost took off. So what I want to do is just get that sorted first. So we're going to delete this tram depot and that's automatically fixed that for us anyway. And then I just want to move this a little bit down the road where it's not going to give us that aggressive connection. There we go. That's much better. Now, in this, this episode, guys, we are going to be talking tools. Apologies for my voice again. I'm still a little bit ill. I've, I'm over the most of it now, but um, my voice might still be a little bit rough, but we'll just have to deal with it for now. Now, for tools, we've got Slough at this side of the map that wants tools. We've also got West Bedlington at the top end, and I think that's it for this side of the river. It is. But then also down at this end, then we've got Bexhill on Sea and Dareham that also want tools. So in this episode, I just want to get a tools production set up. And I've had a quick look around and we've got the Padium Tools Factory here. And then we've also got the Canterbury Tools Factory, which is down here. Now, around Canterbury area, it doesn't look like, other than a sawmill up at Dareham here, the wood's all the way up at this end and there's no sort of close connection. Because the problem is we want the lumber to be as close to the Tools Factory as possible. And the reason for this is... When you make your lumber into planks, it's actually two lumber per one plank. Okay, so you need two sets of logs to make one plank. So here, we already have the perfect setup. But what I'm, I'm not going to do for the minute is what you may be expecting is connecting both of these forests. What I'm actually going to do is just use the one and go to the planks factory a first time, then back, and then come a second time. And on the second time, pick up the planks and go and get the tools well take them to the tools factory i'm yet to decide where we're going to send these tools i'm not sure whether for now we just go to slough or whether we do set a route going all the way up to west bedlington because i've had a little bit of an idea of maybe getting tools to go all the way up to west bedlington and then perhaps to bring some of these construction materials that are coming down from edgeware all the way back down and we could drop those off at slough then and that would be a really profitable route because of the distance so we'll play it by ear for now i think that might be a future thing just because of the, the production we'll need to put in and the amount of things we'll need to produce up at that end but if we start off down at this end the first thing i want to do is to connect this road so we're in a country road and it looks like when i went round and upgraded earlier i may have missed a bit here uh, we want that as no for now, actually. There we go. We haven't got any trams coming down this direction. Um, is that already upgraded? It is not. I could have sworn I'd come down here and upgraded all these. Oh, it is. It's the side of the road. I was thinking it was a dirt road there. Maybe that was the same on the first one there. So we'll go for electric now. And I do want to upgrade this part from the lumber mill. And then we'll go and join up straight into the sawmill here, as direct as possible. And then we'll upgrade the bit just outside there for now. Now, what I'm thinking is, for the first pass through here, we only need to drop off. And I'm trying to avoid the second, when the, when the trams come the second time, I don't want them getting caught up by this stop. But what I am going to do is just put this truck stop here. And then I'm going to put in a, a little turning loop. Now, I need to be careful how I do this. I don't want it to be too aggressive, but I do want it to be a turn. And this is one thing that I find really difficult with the roads, is just peeling off at a nice, a nice angle. You can see that terrain drops aggressively there. That's what I'm trying to avoid. But it looks like it's the terrain down to here, so maybe if I can push that truck stop back a little bit, Let's just see if we can get away with having it where the road's level here. So if we can drop this here, it is still in range there. And then immediately after, if we can turn off, it's not going to let me do that. It, 
it really does play with you sometimes and doesn't let you down. I wonder if I go with a straight connection. No, okay. It does look like the ground's just still a little bit uneven there. But if we go... There we go. I think that's about the best that we're going to get there. It's not too aggressive. And it'll allow us to come around this direction. What looks like a realistic section of curve that we would be able to keep up some speed. And then we'll head back towards the road and we'll connect back in here with that. There we go. So we'll come down this way, we'll drop off the logs here and then we'll go back and we'll head back down to the lumber mill. Now, on the way back again, what I want to do is use one of these. Now, you can go into here and you can change all the entrance and exits. Um, we've already got it set to electric tram. We've got two terminals. I mean, for now, we really only need the one. So if we go to one terminal, I wanted these to avoid each other. I was thinking of seeing if we could do something like this. But so, it, but so the exit was after the junction. But it doesn't look like that's going to work now that I had to move that unless we had the loop on the other side. But I suppose the other option would be for the second run would be to have the exit at 45. We go positive 45 degrees here and we can aim to go up around as long as that's still connected. We can connect this into the road like so. We're still connected here to the lumber mill. I just want to make sure that that's not going to slow traffic down that connection there. Okay, I think that might work. So we've got a wall around. I'm perfectly happy with that. We've got higher cargo capacity. Yeah, because it's going to be planks. We'll have a look at We probably won't be needed, actually. We'll turn that off. Um, what else, what other options have we got here? The connection length was fine at 15 metres. I just scrolled my mouse and it turned that down. Um, terminal type. Terminal width standard is great for us. Terminal type height. Ah, that's, that's the platform height of where we're dropping off. Now, I think we'll keep that on the ground, actually, because there's going to be some heavy lumber and planks. It makes sense to, that you would have it low down. And it looks like if we bring this depot really close to the road... It makes that curve coming in a lot nicer. So if we put that there, and I just want to double check it is connected, it is. Okay, so the second time the trams will come up to drop more logs off. They'll drop them here and then pick up some planks is the idea. Now, from here, we want electric tram track. We want this to come from the exit. We want to curve a nice gentle curve to send us around then. There we go, everything looks like it's got catenaries there. And then now we want to head towards this tools factory. Nice oh, straight bit there. It looks like the terrain's not too much to play with in this area. Because we've got a nice steady gradient going downhill. And then now how are we going to do the depot here? Let's see what we've got available to us for the minute. So we're going to be dropping off. Now, the carriages that transport wood and planks can't carry tools, so this is where I need to decide, are we going to be taking tools back on the same route, or can we have a separate drop-off? Because I could put, just put a truck stop here like we did outside the front of the sawmill, if we're only going to be dropping the planks off here, and then the trams could return back. Um, I'm trying to think how we would plan that in. Um, okay, I think what we'll do guys is we'll get slough hooked up first of all, so I think we'll set it up so they do take some tools back um, and then they can come back off this road down onto the main run into slough and that will stop them crossing over again. So we'll go for that for now and then we'll have a look at maybe at a later date if we want to connect up towards Nottingham. I just think for now that's going to be the best option we have. Okay, so if we're going to have a normal truck stop here, we really only need one platform here, don't we? We do, and if I can put this, we want it as long as possible. It already is as long as possible, okay. We'll put a normal entrance on it because we're going to be coming in and out in the same direction. Oof, I don't like the way that's raised up. It looks like we'll have to put this 
towards the back. There we go. Towards the back of the factory. That'll connect there, and the terrain's nice and smooth. And then we just need to connect in our road with catenary. For some reason, it keeps turning the electric off there. I'm not sure why. So now that's all connected up, and then the trams will head back this way. And then I want to put in a branch that goes onto this road here. But because that road we're not really using at the minute, I'm going to make that the main, the main road through, I think. So there may be occasions here where... Looks like that's about the best we're going to get there. We're going to want to head off. Or we can head off in that direction and then curve it ourselves. I'm just trying to make this set of points here as, as less aggressive as possible. Now if we start heading up towards this. And uh, a bit further over I think. No, actually I think we'll come to about here. And then we'll, we'll try and just sort of swoop that in a little bit nicer. It is just these branch points coming off. That looks like it's almost going back on itself there, so we won't take that one. There we go, that looks like something like it. And then if we delete this back a little bit, we should be able to get a smoothish connection in now and of course it's still going to give me all of these collision warnings there we go it's interesting that sometimes it'll let you do it one way but it won't let you connect up the opposite way now here we're just going to go to keep because this little road here doesn't actually need to be electrified or tram tracked and there we go so that works for the minute and then what we're going to need to do is get some trams but I'm thinking we don't actually have a tram depot down this end and because now all these passengers numbers are building up I think it's about time we got one down this end anyway so if we get ourselves a new tram depot we don't want it near the residential area of town here there's the back end of Slough here industrial it's commercial but that works for us so if we can connect this in over here it sort of just fits in that square there which works for us and now I have just realized I haven't put the, the stop in yet for where the tools are required so let's have a look at whereabouts they are required and there actually isn't there isn't a massive requirement for tools here actually it does only need 22 and it's in this area here so if we have a look at where our trams are all, tram tracks are already running here and it looked like it looked like about here which works for us to do a loop back out actually. So if we go back to roads here, we want to make sure we're on medium street here. We want electrified track. And is that just going to wipe out all of our tool industry? That's going to wipe out all of the buildings if I do that. So we're going to have to come in on this road. And then we're going to want to upgrade to country road. make all of that electrified I'm hoping that means now all of this has got catenaries it does look like it got tram tracks running through here yeah because if because there's only the buildings on this street needing tools guys if I'd have just upgraded that road it would have deleted all of those buildings and they're all the ones that we need so it would have completely squashed our demand so here we only need a truck stop if we put a truck stop here, it is in range of all of those buildings, which is fantastic. And we are off the main road, so we're not going to be slowing down. Off the main route, sorry, so we're not going to be slowing down the trams coming through with passengers on. We may get held up now and again by this one stop here, but we can live with one possible delay on the whole route, I believe. So now we need to set up this rather complicated route. And we don't want to slow down passenger trains too much so they're going at 43 miles an hour the balloon trains that we put in in last episode so we need something that can carry planks and logs first of all i mean we could use the ce2s again but i think we've got so many of those around i think we're going to use the the ge22s 
But what we also need to be able to bring back is tools. So we need to have a look. Do we go four cars, three cars? Now the problem for this is that for the whole of the two journeys before we pick up the tools, these goods wagons here that carry the tools are actually going to be empty. So, but as long as you're running at half full, you are making a profit. So it, this might be the first line that we make that doesn't actually make us a profit, but we need to find out. It's going to have to be uh, done at some point, so we'll find out. I think we'll start with four of those, and then we'll set up the line. And we, of course, have forgotten something, as always. We haven't got the, the pickup point set here. Now, I need to remember that we're going to be coming in from the other direction on the way back. So, I want the connection this side. Or do we have it just after? We could use another one of these guys and have a 45-45. I mean, sure, that makes sense, right? It's on the same line. It would have been built at the same time. It makes sense to have two very similar depots. I mean, that works for me. Right, okay, so we've got these guys. Has it kept line one that I created? It has. Okay, perfect. So we'll go into here, line one, and we want to add a station. And we want to make sure that at the start of the route here, we are waiting for a full load. We can't do that, can we? Actually, let me take that off. That was nearly a mistake there, because if we said, wait for a full load on this one, we don't want to unload anything there. If we wait for a full load, because our box cars that are going to carry in the tools can't pick anything up here, the trams would have just been waiting here forever. So I'm glad I realised that when I did. So what I've just done here, then, as I told it, I wanted to pick up the wood and drop nothing else off, because it should be coming from the town empty. And then the first time through, we want to drop the full load of logs here. And then what I want to do is put a waypoint in on this road. So that after we've dropped those off. Okay, it can't connect those stations. Why can't it connect those? Because there's no catenary. Okay. So we need to upgrade with electric. All of that. Hopefully now that can get there. Sometimes these windows really do get in the way. Why can't I move the line manager here? Hmm. There we go. That's sorted it. So now if we add the next station, it's going to go back. It is going to be Slough Branch again. So we're not going to overlap. We're just going to turn around again. And we're going to use exactly the same platform to pick up again. And I want to make sure there we're unloading because it's a truck stop. That's perfect. Here again, we are only going to load. And we're, going to, we're going to load wood here and we're not going to unload anything. And then on the next one, we're going to come up to the depot here. And now here, we are going to load planks and unload the timber on the second route. And from here, all the way up to the tools factory, where we are going to unload blanks and we are going to load tools is what I'm looking for why have we got no tools available in that list something seems amiss there that is definitely connected isn't it it is okay so on this one then we want to be able to collect tools but for some reason it's not allowing us to collect the tools here So if we tell it to load everything, but only unload, hopefully that works for us. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's not allowing us to select tools there, guys. It seems like it's a little bit, a little bit boggy, maybe. And it comes back into town, and it'll unload everything that it's got there. It's using the correct route. It's coming in and blending onto the main line there. All the way through into town, not affecting the traffic, and then back again to point number one. So that's perfect. So those trams are now on their way. And now I see why it wouldn't let me pick tools up. I've selected the wrong carts on the back of these trams. Okay, so before they go too far, what we need is three and three of the boxcars. 
and I'm hoping and guessing really that that's why we couldn't get tools it is and we want to load tools on the way back and we just want to unload load tools and unload planks there we go so hopefully this guy will automatically see that there is demand in slough here and as soon as we get the number in the box here to say that it's it wants some um, tools delivering it should kick the whole line in we've already got wood on the line here this guy's bringing us the first 21 that curve's not too aggressive at all we'll watch him get onto them back onto the main line here to make sure or the main not the main line i suppose but the main cargo route for this place make sure that's not too aggressive no that's actually looking fine We've, all, we've already got the planks on the line here, which means it knows that that guy wants it. So all we need now is to know that at this stop here, we do need to name this line still as well. So at South Street, we are unloading. I'm just going to try and bump start it to say here that we are unloading tools. Okay, and we're going to rename that. And this is going to be TF for tram freight. And it's going to be slough tools. And then I think we'll colour that a nice steely. That's dark enough to still see against the road. A nice steely colour. There we go. Now hopefully, once our first delivery, if I just speed this up, once our first delivery of blank starts arriving. It should kick in production and then it's it's almost like the building then sorts of think right now I can make some tools where can I deliver them to and it won't do that until it's actually had a delivery of the planks I've noticed that before hopefully this is the first one it is I really like this actually how you can choose to have these stacked on the ground I think for raw resource depots where it, there would be some really heavy weight I think that actually makes sense now, for some reason, this guy's actually still got some logs on board. So, I want to have a look at that. I just want to make sure that the tools start being produced here. And it realises that Slough actually wants those. I'm guessing that as soon as it drops these off, it will kick it, it, will kick it in. So, now we can produce, and Slough's kicked in. One, two, there we go. Now we know that that's started, we should be fine. Now... I'm wondering why he had logs. None, as, none of the others have here. So maybe it was just a little bit of a glitch from when I changed over the trams. So this guy is going to be the first one to actually pick up some tools. And because these are one for one here, we should basically still be at half full capacity. Meaning that all the way down here we should still be profitable. We're emptying one side of the of the tram, if you like, and filling the other. But he didn't bring many planks then. So he's topping out at 31 miles per hour, which could slow up the passenger lines. But because of how spaced out the passenger line is, which we need to check on the finances for, I don't think it'll be too much of an issue. You can see these stops here, 56 passengers waiting there, 50 here. I think we do need to add some more trams to that line, actually. Why did he just completely spin around in the depot there? Ah, so it looks like they're only actually using one side of the station here. So if you can see here, there is people waiting for each platform. And then he's just come out and turned around. Is there a terminals button here we can use? There is. So for stop 11 on the way back, we want that to be terminal 2, don't we? Now, of course, everybody crosses the road. And hopefully now that, that keeps that moving. Okay, so guys, we've got, oh, industry closure at Slough. Well, we're not using any crude oil around this area anyway. There's no oil refineries other than the one we're already using down here. And we've got a backup crude, so that's absolutely fine. So it looks like we are now delivering tools to Slough. That should kick in. We should have 20, the 22 here. 
this is a point, guys. If you um, if you're fairly new to the game or you're not too au okay fait with the way everything works, is when you click on your town, you can see here that Slough requires 22. Now, all that means is that the game itself knows that the buildings that want tools add up to 22. It's nothing to do with how many you're currently delivering. And then the consumers here, where you see the shipping, this 22, if that adds up to the same as what the town's demanding, you know that your truck stop is covering every building. So, if you, for example, if Slough now said it wanted 50 tools delivering, but our tools factory only said 22 here, then we would know that we weren't. there was some new buildings had cropped up that were outside the catchment of our truck stop. So that's always a good thing to check on. You can always just check your industries against that. But I think, guys, we're just going to have a look at the finances for the passenger line that we put in last time. <laughs> there we go. The good old Blackpool balloon trams make it as 1.2 million. So, so I've not got an issue adding in another couple. I'm going to add in another three because we've got all of these looking for 50 more passengers. There's 67 people at a normal bus stop here. Which is absolutely crazy, but the thing is, obviously now we're connected up to all of this system and all the shops in all the towns, and it's just going to drive that demand. And then in the next episode, I think we're going to look at bringing West Bedlington and Nottingham down and in. And then I believe that's actually... Is that every town connected? I think it is, yeah. Excuse me. Yes, that's it. That'll be every town connected passenger-wise then. And then we can look at start well start to look at how we can make it more efficient and how we can just start to get more cargo around this system. I'm still in two minds, guys, and just let me know again in the comments whether you think it's a good idea. There is a mod that allows you to put down a train track but to have some modded trams running on it. And I was in two minds whether to use it sort of just one end, say from Newark to Louth, just one route up the centre of the country. Or even one, one route that went from Nottingham over the bridge to that Louth station that we made. This, this really cool tram station here. How many people are here actually? Ah, that's spread out, so that's not too bad. But if we then had a, a tram station here, uh, a rail station with the trams running, and then down to maybe Canterbury. Just something a little bit different to try. I'm just with it being with me saying that the whole idea of this series is it being only trams. I'm not sure if I like the idea of bringing rail into it at all. But I suppose, on the flip side, if they are trams running on rail, light rail as such, then does that count? Let me know what you think, guys. But anyway, thanks a lot for joining me again for another episode. I really do appreciate it. Thanks, as always, for your comments down below. I really enjoy reading those, and it really makes it all worthwhile. We are fast approaching the uh, 1,000 subscriber mark. And at that point, I'm not sure if all of you are aware, but at the 1,000 subscriber mark, you start to get a little bit of money trickling in from the videos, which will help me because I've just spent £70 on a new mouse because mine's on the way out. Every now and again, as I'm looking at something, my mouse just disappears off the screen to the right. But this mouse that I've got at the minute is a Razer Nagger, and I've had it for about 15 years now, so it is time that I had an upgrade, so I don't mind that. But yeah, a little bit of money trickling in had to help me upgrade my PC and microphone and things would be really useful. As always, guys, thank you, and I will catch you in the next video.